First, let's get to the breaking news now. I want to bring in CNN national security analyst Matthew Rosenberg, who broke the Cambridge Analytica story for the New York Times. Also with us, CNN contributor John Dean, who was Nixon White House counsel, and CNN legal analyst Laura Coates. The gang's all assembled. Welcome. Good evening to all. Matthew, I'm going to start with you because uh, your new reporting, you've, you've learned that the Justice Department and the FBI investigating Cambridge Analytica. What exactly are they looking for? So it, it, this is very early days, and, and it's opaque because these investigations are. What we know is that you've got a senior prosecutor who deals with financial fraud who's been questioning former employees and others. They've reached out to the banks Cambridge Analytica did, did business with. There's also been an FBI agent involved who deals with cyber crimes. People who have spoken with the prosecutors as witnesses and others have said that, that all they were told was that there was an open investigation into Cambridge Analytica and, and, and associated U.S. persons. Who those people are, the prosecutors wouldn't say. We obviously know the company was founded by Robert Mercer, the very wealthy Republican benefactor. His daughter Rebecca was on the board. Stephen Bannon was on the board. Um, there weren't a whole lot of other U.S. persons involved. Um, interestingly, two of the prosecutors and FBI agent flew to London to question people earlier this month, which is, you know, a, it's a big step, it's a big move. And so this does look like more than a fishing expedition. Prosecutors aren't brought in to kind of check things out. They're brought in to make cases. Yeah. And so they are looking into stuff. So we'll talk about the legal angle in just a second with Laura, but I got to ask you, the company, Matthew, harvested the private data for, from tens of millions of Facebook profiles, used it to profile Americans. Talk about how that information was used. So they took a, a kind of wide swath of information off profiles, and they were trying to build these models, they said, that could predict the personalities of voters, and then you could kind of advertise <clears throat> narrowly at them and say, you know, this person's neurotic, we're going to appeal to their fear with images of walls, you know, things like that. Whether it worked is a huge debate. There are a lot of people who say they, they never got it right and they weren't even close and that they were selling snake oil. The company insists this, this was their secret sauce and that they're the, at times, their company's former chief executive said they were the reason Trump was elected. All right. Uh, so, Laura, Cambridge Analytica <clears throat> was brought on by the Trump campaign to help with uh, digital efforts. Do you think members of the Trump campaign are caught up in this investigation? I think they absolutely are. I remember Jared Kushner was one of the people, I believe, who was touting the use of Cambridge Analytica, certainly played a key role in it. And Steve Bannon also played a key role, not only in having it be a part of the campaign, but bringing Cambridge Analytica to the forefront and on U.S. soil about these very issues. And he did have very you know, significant ties to the Mercer family before he left Breitbart and was no longer and became the persona non grata. But certainly with all those different ties and those obvious connections to Cambridge Analytica, combined with the efforts of the Mueller investigation and probe to target various Russian troll companies who had a very big hand in trying to infuse divisive rhetoric and also trolling, using Facebook as a conduit of all that illegality, perhaps. It's obvious why there would be an interest in this particular organization. And again, we're seeing this overall theme of following the money. If there is somebody who has been enticed in some way to engage in behavior that we find offensive to American legal systems, then we have to follow that particular trail and that investigation. Nothing has come of it, according to the reporting yet by Matthew, but certainly it would not shock anyone that they would be a subject of interest. So, John, let me bring you in now, because uh, former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort dealt a big setback in court today with the federal judge overseeing his case in Washington, denying his motion to dismiss the criminal charges against him. Here's what uh, the judge wrote. The judge said, given the combination of his prominence within the campaign and his ties to Ukrainian officials supported by and operating out of Russia, as well as to Russian oligarchs, Manafort was an obvious person of interest. The special counsel would have been remiss to ignore such an obvious potential link between the Trump campaign and the Russian government. So give me, talk to me about the significance of that decision. Well, it's very clear that the effort to uh, get the action dismissed based on the power of the special counsel didn't work. Uh, Judge Jackson looked right through it, in fact, found that the clause that he had no problem with in his motion uh, covered exactly the investigation that the indictment produced. Uh, and so it was all there. She found no basis. And she said even the regulations that he was relying on clearly themselves expressly say you cannot rely on these regulations to grant any right to anybody outside of the Department of Justice. They have to deal with the management of the prosecution and not what the uh, subjects of the prosecution can do with those regs. So uh, it, it's a strong opinion. It's going to affect the case in 
uh, Virginia under Judge Ellis, who's kind of hinted he might look more sympathetically, but this is going to be tough to get around. But that is a, John, that's a very different ruling today from what we saw earlier in the month. Remember the federal judge in Virginia who said that Manafort... Judge Ellis. Yeah, may have only been scrutinized in an effort to get the president. Um, wouldn't you say it's quite different, right? Very different. Well, he was just sort of uh, chatting on the bench about his, his perception of the case. Uh, he wasn't actually ruling on anything in those, in those words. And I think that uh, with Judge Jackson's it's about a 30-page opinion. I went through it quickly, and it's, and it's well-reasoned, and uh, it, it's just not going to go away if Judge Ellis thinks that uh, the Department of Justice can't prosecute who it wants with which prosecutors it wants. Let's move on. I want to talk about um, Rudy Giuliani to you guys and Laura. First to you. Rudy Giuliani's made a number of headlines since coming mm -hmm. aboard the president's legal team. Today, the president's longtime personal attorney, Jay Goldberg, said he is not impressed. Listen. Is Rudy Giuliani doing a good job for Trump? I don't think so. I, I think he's a polarizing figure. There are those people who uh, think he was a wonderful prosecutor, but he has no record uh, managing a defense of someone who's accru uh, accused of wrongdoing. And to think that when he comes aboard, Mueller is going to be somehow frightened into uh, 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 cutting his investigation short is uh, doesn't really know the role he plays in law enforcement. Is Giuliani doing more harm than good? I think that question must be rhetorical, Don, at this point in time, because I think he is absolutely doing more harm than good. He's attempting to straddle the line be behind being a PR, publicity person, mm -hmm. and the president's personal advocate and attorney. And frankly, those two roles really have very different functions. If you are the lawyer of the, of the president, which he is, the personal attorney, you've got to safeguard that particular person and not have them get more legal exposure by your own comments or by contradictory statements you may have made that may even lead you to being a witness to talk about those contradictions. The PR strategy he's employing of the sort of bulldog tactic of going on the offense may be an effective PR strategy, but when, these, when the mouthpiece of the president or the client that he is working with has said so many inconsistent statements, he invites greater scrutiny. And remember, this is Rudy Giuliani, and what the person they're talking about is, based on his experience as a prosecutor, the thought was he could anticipate the role of a defense um, counsel for somebody and need yeah. to be able to safeguard them in a productive way. He's not doing that. He's exposing greater liability. And frankly, if he were in talks with the White House counsel, whose role is to protect the actual office, they must be very frustrated that he has doing counterproductive things for their ability to advocate. I'm sure, I'm sure there is some frustration there that is not public. Maybe Matthew knows more about that. But Matthew, let me ask you, what do you make of, of Goldberg's point that Giuliani's presence alone was never going to change the balance of power between Trump and Mueller? I mean, of course it wasn't. You know, Mueller is doing an investigation. He's out there collecting facts. What he finds is what he finds, and that's what they're going to either question the president about or, or you know, find other ways. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for the president. I don't know if Giuliani's doing a good job or not. I know that when I've had to deal with lawyers, I kind of look to sober counsel, um, any of the lawyers I've hired, and not somebody to go out there and make a show of it. And I don't see how this helps. Thank you all. I appreciate your time.